to be part of the deepening of democracy and the strengthening of our democracy, whose pillars include people's participation. You are also welcome. The media, if it's part of the briefing here today, we are going to be dealing with uh, one item, which is a briefing by the department on the matters of relations between South Africa and the United States of America. Before we do that, can we have somebody moving for adoption of the agenda? Honorable Chair, Honorable Father, I will move. Thank you very much, Honorable Father. Seconda. Uh, President. Yes. President of the South African National Civic Organization. Honorable Mbanza, thank you very much. Lubabalo, do we have any apologies? And honorable members, uh, I have two apologies, Chair. One for the minister. She left for the SA Burundi Joint Corporation. And uh, the DG is also not available. He's attending to the Ethiopian funds. And then the minister, what else, is also left for Turkey to hold my letter meetings. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Honorable members, as you know, the United States of America is one of the most strategic role players in the global politics. One of the variables that may that's the most important part. The size of its economy makes it difficult for the U.S. to be ignored by any serious role player globally. Secondly, it is one of the massive role players in the affairs of the world managed by the United Nations and all the ancillary bodies of the United Nations, such as the Security Council. Thirdly, United Nations plays a major role in contributing to both uh, peacemaking and war making in the world. So it's a double-edged sword. In some instances, it pursues peace, depending on the circumstances. In other instances, the US does get itself involved in igniting wars. Fourthly, the U.S. in terms of contributing to technological development is one of the massive and big role players. Fifthly, in as far as the politics of the U.S. are concerned, because it remains a vulnerable state politically, the U.S. has got the responsibility to make sure that it normalizes not only its relationship with states that agree and work with it very well, but also with states that may not be on the same wavelength politically with the United States of America. Next 10 to 15 years, US number one position as far as economic uh, control global is concerned will be taken over by China. It is in that context, Pak, honorable members, that we have to discuss today as we get the briefing on what South Africa's role relationship-wise is with the U.S. A week ago, we saw an announcement by the U.S. intelligence without following the South African protocols of dealing with such complex matters of security, pronouncing that there's going to be some serious security situation in Santa. 
We have seen the response by the president's office. We have also seen the response by intelligence. I don't know whether it's a sufficient response or not. I thought one of the things that was supposed to have been done was either an immediate call by our president to the US president or by way our minister to the counterpart or some formal meeting between the US and South Africa somehow. If it has taken place or it's in the pipeline, I apologize. It may have uh, escaped my radar. So I'm now going to give over to our honorable comrade, Kendith Mashikho Tamin, to then do the opening and hand over to whoever is entrusted with the responsibility to unpack for the committee how this relationship between us and the U.S. is, and how should we take it forward. Over to you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Chair, and uh, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, the members of the public that are with us in this meeting today. We are pleased to provide an update on South African strategic bilateral mechanisms with the United States of America. Bilateral relations with the U.S. are cordial and have gained a momentum since the inauguration of the Biden administration in January 2021. High-level interaction between the United States and South Africa has increased significantly as compared to the situation under the former president administration in fulfillment of President Biden's election promise to engage Africa on a more respectful and equal basis. In 2022 alone, all three structured bilateral mechanisms between South Africa and the U.S. met, which is unprecedented. In February, the 12th Annual Bilateral Forum, forum met at the senior official level. This forum reviews all development cooperation projects across different sectors that are funded by the development assistant managed by the United States aid. In August, the U.S. and South Africa strategic dialogue was convened in South Africa at ministerial level after a hiatus of seven years. This was followed by a meeting of the Working Group on Africa and Global Issues at Director General's level on the 27th September this year in Washington, D.C. The presentation which follows will go deeper into the issues discussed at this important forum. In addition, Chair, to the above strategic bilateral mechanism, President Ramaphosa undertook an official visit to Washington, D.C. on the 15th to 16th September this year at the invitation of President Joe Biden. All three of these strategic bilateral mechanisms and the visit of the president allow for a strategic review and reset of the bilateral relations with the United States, including in the African context and the current geopolitical situation. This high-level engagement not only underscored the strategic nature of our relations with the United States, but also the recognition of South Africa as an important region, as an important regional and global role player. The identification of new priorities to strengthen the bilateral relationship with the United States bodes well for our efforts towards economic recovery and to address the triple challenges. Similarly, the alignment of U.S. development assistance to South Africa's National Development Plan and our domestic priorities, as well as undertaking by the U.S. government to work with the African Union in addressing peace, security, and development challenges on the continent 
should be welcomed. Honorable Chairperson, allow me to invite Ambassador Lomo, the Deputy Director General Americas, to do a detailed presentation on South African strategic bilateral mechanisms with the United States of America. I thank you, Chair. Um, honorable chairperson, uh, honorable members, and deputy minister, you're where I am. Um, I will um, has uh, let me give firstly give an overview of the bilateral relations with the US. Um, I think um, um, DM has uh, correctly pointed out the first one is. The Chairperson, Honorable Farber, can you hear me? Um, the presenter is not audible. I can hear you. The, prese the, the presenter is fading. If you can just try and improve the, the connectivity to that side. Presenter? Ambassador? Um, Chairperson, can I, can, uh, I'm Laura from Durko, can um, so, um, someone please um, d unable, uh, disable the uh, uh, screen sharing? I need to upload uh, DDG Dlomo's presentation, please. Yeah, I'm sure they can hear you. Okay. Yes, yes, Chairperson, the sharing is enabled. Okay. Is it my own? Oh, yes. Honorable uh, Chairperson, my apologies. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you are very, very audible now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my apologies, Honorable. Um, nah, it's sorry. like you are in Plain Street in Cape Town. You are very audible now. <laughs> okay. Um, let me start on page four because the, the DM has already given the, uh, the, the background. In terms of the uh, bilateral outcomes of the strategic dialogue, firstly, on trade and investment. Uh, South Africa raised the issue of lifting Section 232 tariffs uh, on some of our products, like uh, steel, and, and also um, asked for an expanded market access for citrus, pork, and, chick and chicken, and an establishment of, of advisory task force to boost trade and investment levels. Um, since then, the, our export of citrus fruit to U.S. has increased a lot uh, compared to what's happening in EU right now with all the, the uh, restrictions which have been imposed on our citrus. Um, in terms of the advisory task force, it involves all uh, stakeholders, business, government, and NGOs who are in the field where they meet and say, how do we make the environment more conducive uh, to increase trade and investment between our two countries? Climate, climate uh, change and energy, and the Just uh, Transition Project. Please go back. Uh, and uh, how to prepare for future pandemics was discussed, and, uh, and the preparedness for uh, COP27, which is happening this week, was also discussed. Um, and some commitments were made in terms of uh, South Africa and Africa demanding that uh, the, the offer, uh, which is uh, what is being offered uh, to Africa and South Africa in terms of uh, transitioning towards a green economy should be based on our needs and our um, dynamics. In terms of infrastructure, uh, the U.S. Uh, showed in uh, interest in the investment in rail network and digital economy, particularly uh, starting from South Africa, SADC, and the whole uh, uh, Africa, African continent in terms of the AFCFTA. Health, I must say that uh, support for HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis through the PEFA program has been going on uh, since 2004 
uh, and it's on bipartisan uh, basis. And we can say that to date, when you calculate US is the highest contributor in this area. And there are models which they are already uh, developing uh, in this area, uh, which will be a model for, for the whole world. And uh, when we calculate what they've offered to date since then, it comes to um, 8 billion. Regional issues, uh, peace and security, the issues which we discussed in Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Swatini, Lesotho, DRC, and Rwanda. And again, support for public health. And this will also include, as we're saying, future pandemics, uh, uh, research, innovation, technology, and all that. And again, you recall your excellencies and, and honorable members that when India and South Africa were fighting at the WTO, asking for TRIPS waiver, uh, which is allowing uh, other countries where there is a life-threatening condition to uh, not follow the rules as they are or be allowed to follow the rules in a way which they are never allowed uh, in, under normal circumstances to develop their own capacity to deal with the pandemic. Uh, US was the only country from the West who supported India and South Africa. And since then, they've managed to help us to, to get the agreement which we, we received in this area. Extension of AGOA. Here, uh, AGOA is coming to an end in 2025. And uh, the figures in terms of trade and investment are quite good and positive towards South Africa. And it's because of the preferences which are offered under AGOA. And so the, the negotiations between them and us then has been about uh, asking that AGOA should be extended uh, for the continent. Of course, I've spoken about the support for the AFCFTA, um, uh, which they really support because then it combines and integrates the whole of the continent. Next slide, please. On global issues, we discussed Russia and Ukraine uh, conflict and South Africa reiterated our position for the use of peace building dialogue, mediation, negotiations to bring about the end to conflict. Um, also, Your Excellencies, uh, Honorable Members, I'm not sure if you are aware of a, a bill uh, which was passed by the US Congress, uh, which is now at the Senate, which is about, it's called Countering Malign Russian Activities in Africa Bill basically saying whoever does uh, business with Russia, whether an individual or institution, they will be punished by the US. So it's still a bill. And uh, our government, uh, ministerial level, presidential level, have, have raised uh, concern and protested against this. SIDEC as well has protested AU is, is coming up because they are saying Africa is being punished. Uh, for whatever they could be doing with Russia, which is not even related to, to the war. Um, the, the White House, President Biden and, and, and the ministers have, have said that they, as government, uh, are not part to it. It was done in, in Congress and they will not support it because they don't believe it's a, it's a good idea. And so, because at the end of the day, once Senate approves it as it was uh, approved at Congress, uh, then President Biden will have to, to sign off. And he has indicated that he will not. On food security, uh, there is a, everybody understands that there's a serious uh, uh, impact on food security in the African continent in particular because uh, of, of the war and uh, also the challenges posed by dysfunctional global supply chains. Um, the, the US pledged support for securing supplies of food fertilizers and insurance to get shipments out to people in need and also to working uh, with us uh, in this area going forward and looking for uh, different options on how to deal with this going forward. And of course, Africa is being called upon uh, to start uh, increasing manufacturing in these different uh, areas. Palestine supports uh, South Africa pointed out the inconsistency by the US in dealing with international human rights issues with special reference to the seizure of Palestinian land by Israel. And um, US has always responded that 
they are on their side also trying to push uh, Israel uh, to move towards negotiations uh, in terms of this. And uh, they, they keep on, uh, but they've not succeeded and they've accepted, they, they've admitted to that. Please, uh, next slide. Then we had the, the working group and really the key issues uh, were political and regional issues. Uh, in Ethiopia, the parties discussed a proposal for South Africa to host all-inclusive peace talks under the auspices of the AU uh, for Ethiopia. And the AU had already um, started engaging South Africa on this. And as we can uh, we can say, uh, honorable members, that uh, this point in time, as, as we speak, uh, the mediation process uh, is is underway. Mozambique, the, the U.S. conveyed its willingness to step up support for, for Mozambique, um, especially in addressing the challenges of poor governance and underdevelopment. We recall that earlier, uh, U.S. had uh, publicly said that there are terrorists in Mozambique. That's what the biggest problem is. And in engagement, constant engagement with them to, to show, uh, to indicate the complexity of the, the, the problem and also in terms of ability of governance to deal with it and, and the development in the particular region, they've come back to say, we, we hear you and we are making efforts uh, to also contribute towards a strengthening government and also the development in the particular region. Zimbabwe, um, South Africa reiterated the call for sanctions to be completely lifted to lay a foundation for free and fair elections and economic recovery. And uh, that was received positively, uh, but U.S. did say that they would like to engage uh, more uh, with the leaders in Zimbabwe. And so far, the leaders, they have not been forthcoming. Sudan, the two sides agreed on the need for a civilian-led government and democracy, and how in all these areas uh, we can work together. Please, next slide. Um, the high levels, uh, let me just uh, be quick on this one. And uh, the high level being at the presidential level, uh, again on Russia and Ukraine, um, South Africa reinforced the fact that it supports the UN principle of territorial integrity of states and their sovereignty, um, but also called for uh, consistency and also said the, the powerful countries have the power to stop the war and they should start looking for uh, solutions, for a peaceful solution which can last. Um, and also the fact that the UN uh, will need to play a more central role in, in the future and the challenges of the UN have been, um, have come out more strongly during, during this time because in the P5 UN uh, Security Council, where they've got votes, including Russia, they couldn't solve the, the problem of all the resolutions they were, they were trying to put on because of the way UN is structured. The US uh, said it, they understand uh, completely that the UN needs to be um, reformed and they would like if South Africa has got some inputs on how that could happen and also they will be asking other countries. Um, but we know that there's been a, a call by those excluded from the Security Council for, for decades now. And we're hoping that this will bring us that opportunity to then really address uh, the reform. Palestine, the same issues in terms of consistencies. China, Taiwan, uh, US here was asking South Africa to take a stand in terms of what they believe uh, China is doing on Taiwan and um, and also recognize uh, Taiwan in that way, uh, but South Africa reiterated its respect for the one China policy. Please move on. Next slide, please. I've, I've, I've spoken about the US support for the implementation of grain and fertilizer uh, as agreed with other multilateral partners at the G7 and the UN. Um, and, and also to, to say that since the UN uh, General Secretary 
and take he engage both Russia and Ukraine in terms of making sure that the, uh, the ships are allowed to get out of Ukraine to the world and particularly to, to the northern side of uh, Africa. That agreement has been uh, celebrated as a, as, a, as a positive outcome, although it would be expiring and now negotiations will start again to allow that to happen. Let's move on. Annual bilateral forum, um, I will not repeat some of the things, but um, again, just to, to uh, make it clearer uh, to the members of the uh, House, honorable members, uh, about how this works. So your annual bilateral forum is made up of 18 departments, our departments, who work with their counterparts, US ideas, you know it, and US agencies in South Africa. Uh, to collaborate across nine sectoral working groups, some of which are combined in terms of the activities. Uh, so the, the projects in this uh, uh, are in the area of health, education, science, technology, and innovation, transport, safety and security, environment, water and sanitation, trade and investment, as well as various capacity building initiatives that are also targeted to women and the youth. Um, key aligned, uh, key areas aligned to South Africa's national interests and domestic priorities that were discussed are spoken about trade and investment and uh, the Just Transition Project. Uh, market access, I've spoken about that already, and the lifting of tariffs uh, on exports of aluminium and steel. And also South Africa will be hosting the AGOA Forum in 2023. The two sides also discuss challenges in the economic relationship, such as uh, U.S. concerns in the film in incentives and market access for poultry products um, and uh, South Africa's request for wider access to citrus products and review of GSP. Now, um, this, these are some of the restrictions which were put by the previous uh, president of USA. And uh, so we are pushing uh, with uh, President Biden's uh, presidency to lift out uh, some of these. And where there was misunderstanding in terms of the film industry, uh, also we are engaging with them to, to explain that. So agriculture is also one of the key um, uh, sectors in, in what we are dealing with DTIC and them. Please, next slide. Health, um, I've pointed out this, that this has been an area where USA over the decades um, has been very consistent and supportive, uh, particularly through the uh, uh, president's emergency plan for AIDS relief. Uh, and then in, in relation to COVID-19, uh, again, um, they worked with us in terms of um, making sure that we were able uh, to be allowed at WTO level as developing countries in particular uh, to start manufacturing uh, our own vaccines and all related issues. Um, in the, so cooperation will continue in these key areas, which is HIV, TB, treatment and prevention, and has enhancing resilience, integrated health systems and support for key innovations and research, but also working together in terms of uh, future pandemics in the research um, and technology and innovation area. Um, education um, also acknowledges the work of South Africa US Higher Education Network, which focuses on the training of young masters and PhD students with the aim of replacing aging ac academics in various um, uh, higher education institution. Um, I must say also that there is uh, one program which was started uh, by uh, President Obama as well for young people, uh, which takes them to different uh, uh, regions and, and places, companies, universities uh, to learn about leadership. And, and also business and all that. And that has been very, very, um, doing very, very well. There's also an ongoing support for early childhood development through the Department of Basic Education. Please move. Safety and security. Um, 
the U.S. counterparts will continue to provide training and capacity building programs for the SAPS in activities such as investigation to corruption, cyber and financial crimes, trafficking in drugs and forensic investigations, and the International Law Enforcement Academy in Um I know that uh, the, chair, the Honorable Chairperson did raise an issue about uh, the last, last week's uh, announcement by U.S. and not engaging closely. Uh, the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development and their U.S. counterparts uh, also are cooperating in the areas of extradition and mutual legal assistance. Uh, also, we're, combined, um, we're finalizing the combined DNA index system agreement and the automated targeting system to assist South Africa with improving its border management. It was agreed that the 20th uh, Defense Committee meeting SAUS Defense Committee meeting will be hosted by US during this month, and the, the dates um, have uh, been agreed to already. Uh, on the environment, uh, again, we're working together in terms of environmental conservation and water resource management. And also, uh, US provides assistance in fighting wildlife trafficking and illicit trade. Please move on. Science and technology, a lot uh, in terms of progress has been achieved in this area, like in health research, as I've pointed out, energy, all the different areas, including space science. And uh, the, the side visit in 2021 to the SKA project in Kimberley, um, and a new project using the South African Radio Astronomer Observatory, Mirkart. That was agreed to, um, and recently when the, our president may, met the vice president, she was quite keen uh, to also come and visit uh, and, and see the SKA project and the different uh, projects we run in this area with them. Um, South Africa wishes to focus as we go forward on fourth industrial revolution technologies and, and cooperation satellite launches, and this was a part of the discussion. And U.S. invited South Africa to join the Artemis Accords. Uh, those are the prin principles for cooperation in the civil exploration and the use of the moon, Mars, comets, and asteroids for asteroids for the peaceful purposes. In energy, this is one of the biggest because of the just transition from coal to green. The parties acknowledge the funding support of you uh, 8.5 8 billion U.S. dollars, which is about 132 billion over, over the three to five years partnership by the US and others for a just transition. The US here uh, is part of uh, a group which includes UK, um, France, and Germany. And uh, this is part of what was agreed to uh, on how to work forward. But of course, uh, when the calculations are made, um, are made and also looking at how this will be utilized, uh, it's very clear on our side that more needs to be put into it. But the nature for that the grant or a loan also is being negotiated. And we're hoping that uh, as we go forward, uh, COP27 will clarify some of the concerns we've raised with the US, not just for, for South Africa, but also for the whole of South Africa. The, our president has not been able to meet with President or have a call with President Biden right now because they are having their midterm elections, which is why then they couldn't uh, even engage last week when they, there were all these issues they raised. There are ongoing negotiations to renew the bilateral nuclear cooperation agreement, which expires in December this year, uh, but also an agreement to convene the bilateral energy dialogue as soon as possible. So the U.S. is a major, because the question is, why is U.S. important to South Africa? The U.S. is a major economic and development cooperation partner for South Africa, an important export market for value-added goods, a source of foreign direct investment, technology, and of tourists. Um, SA-U.S. bilateral relations have a wide spectrum of issues aligned to South Africa's domestic priorities and the NDP such as health, education, environment, agriculture, all of those as I pointed out earlier on. The U.S. is now South Africa's second largest export destination. And AGOA, which is Africa, African Growth and Opportunities Act, has allowed for duty-free and quota-free exports 
to the U.S. market. Uh, it was renewed in 2015 for 10 years until 2025. It creates over 62,000 direct jobs in South Africa and 100,000 jobs in the U.S. South Africa received just over $2 billion uh, U.S. dollars uh, in development assistance from the United States in 2020. Let's continue. Biden's administration strategy towards sub-Saharan Africa. When uh, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, came here to, to meet our minister, uh, they, he launched a strategy or unveiled uh, Africa strategy um, in, when he was in South Africa. And it envisages the U.S. new vision for 21st century U.S.-African partnership and represent a reframing of Africa's importance to U.S. national security interests. It appreciates that sub-Saharan Africa plays a critical role to advance global priorities to benefit both Africans and Americans. It, it is impossible to meet today's defining challenges without African contributions and, and leadership, and this is what is in their strategy. Four main objectives which are highlighted in the strategy is to foster openness and open societies, deliver democratic and security dividends, advance pandemic recovery and economic opportunity, support conservation, climate adaptation, and a just energy transition. Please go on. So the Biden's administration has stated a desire to normalize relations with traditionally friendly countries such, um, such as South Africa. And this was really uh, welcomed by South Africa because that involves South Africa, Africa, and the whole developing world. Because of a stronger emphasis on multilateralism, a more respectful tone in engagement with Africa, and enhanced support for the African agenda. On this one, um, honorable members, I must point out that there is a, a constant engagement at all levels uh, between the US American leaders and our leaders in, in South Africa. And the, the fact that we take the position that we've taken on Ukraine has been respected in a sense that when every time they are not clear and they want to, to hear more, they come, they do phone and call our leaders and, and, and engage. The US is willing then to assist South Africa's economic recovery, support the FCFTA, which we spoke about already, innovation and, and advancement in the digital economy and the just energy transition. There's a, there is better synergy with South Africa in terms of desire for inclusivity and preference for rules-based outcomes in international institutions such, such as the UN, G20, and WTO. There is a greater respect for South Africa's voice, as I've pointed out, and influence as a regional and a global player. The emphasis in the new Africa strategy on countering the influence of China and Russia uh, in Africa contrasts with the new spirit of equality and respect for sovereignty espoused by President Biden. Um, this is the um, also it relates to, to the bill which their Congress also set out. So the, 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 the China-US uh, trade war, if you can call that, is something which we always have to manage very um, sensitively. While we make sure that our national interests are addressed and also we are not being influenced in either way. Please go on. Um, Economic outlook, the recent high level engagements have placed economic recovery at the center of the bilateral relationship with the US. Um, I've already pointed out that uh, South Africa will be hosting the AGOA Forum in 2023, and that really presents an opportunity to influence the deliberations on the future uh, US Africa economic relationship as AGOA will expire in 2025. Um, collateral damage to the South African economy due to the U.S.-China trade conflict and the strategic competition of the two countries in, in pursuit of global economic and te technological dominance is something we, we work with on a daily basis. 
uh, China's emergence as a super, and, and here perhaps I should point out that, for instance, uh, I'm sure everyone knows that there was a, a, a bitter engagement with the US and the Huawei uh, company uh, in the US, and, and uh, we were very worried at some point that sanctions were going to be imposed on anybody who's using Huawei, and we engage quite uh, strongly and consistently with the Americans on this one because uh, our companies had already raised concern that if that were to happen, the, the, the economy would collapse. Uh, China's, China's emergence as a superpower threatens the dominant geostrategic position of the US, and I'm sure everybody um, can relate to that. Um, and we're not only, uh, we, as I've indicated, indicated getting caught up in the rivalry and also in the issues uh, related to how China uh, engages with the US or how they engage with each other, particularly uh, in the market, uh, which in this instance we're talking about Huawei and also digitization in, in general. So South Africa maintains cordial relations with both China and Russia. I've already uh, pointed that out. And the challenge is always to find a balance and remain neutral while advancing our own interest through maintaining and strengthening political and economic ties with both. Please move. What are the key priorities for 2023? We promote strengthening institutional partnerships and implementation of existing agreements in science, innovation, education, and research with the US, including in public health, and commercialization of technologies and uh, um, enhance consultation and collaboration with the US on climate change and a just transition away from a carbon intensive economy. I've already pointed out uh, COP27, which is uh, currently taking place. In engagements with the US, uh, we continue to reposition South Africa as an inf influential actor and respected partner on the international stage, including through the use of soft power. Use South, we use South Africa's constitution as a basis to champion democracy, human rights, restorative justice, and support for vulnerable groups in partnership with like-minded governments and NGOs in the Americas, also taking advantage of the Biden's administration focus on promoting social cohesion and racial redress in the US. Honorable, um, Chairperson and honorable members, that's where our presentation ends. Thank you very much. Honorable Chair? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. That's where our presentation ends. Yes, I thought the Deputy Minister might have something to to add or something. If you're okay, or, uh, the Deputy Minister will go into the discussion. Yes, Chair, I'm okay about the presentation. Thank you. Okay, our first hand is Honorable Faber. Thanks for the presentation. Excellent. Good morning, Chair. Good morning to everyone and to the presenters. Um, hope you all have a good morning uh, without any power rollouts. Um, Chairperson, yes, I, I would just like to start off and um, specifically with this ships that uh, uh, Russia stopped in the Black Sea coming to other countries with maize. Now, Chairperson, with President Ramaphosa, who held the position as chairperson of the African Union, I do believe um, that he should have been the first person to contact Russia um, when they tried to stop this maze from moving through the Black Sea um, to tell um, his friend, Mr. Putin, to immediately stop this. And the reason for that chairperson the countries who's going to suffer, and you can go and have a look on your maps, it is mostly, I would almost want to say 90% North African countries that's not going to have food. There will be disaster in these countries. Now, if we, as South Africa, and the position was taken by this government, 
that we are standing neutral and we want to see if we can stop the war in Ukraine, which I believe everyone wants, then this government should be the first government to stand up when Russia wants to stop ships and the treaty for sending food to North African countries. We should be first, but we are silent. Again, South Africa's silent on not letting Russia know to let these ships go through for food for the hungry people of Africa. So I want to know why are we silent? Because it seems to us that South Africa is silent when it suits us. And um, Chairperson, I think we have to look into this, that our president gets off his chair and uh, Minister Pandor and immediately take action to contact Mr. Putin to immediately stop this nonsense that Africa can get the food um, before we've got a huge, huge crisis in Africa. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Bergman followed by Honorable Mpanzas. Thanks, Honorable Faba. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, just uh, using the ships as another example, there's a yacht on its way, making its way uh, from Hong Kong to Cape Town. This is something that uh, we've seen the effects of the Cold War in Ukraine between Russia and America warming up. And I think what you're going to see now is in a cinema near you in South Africa is the Cold War warming up in South Africa because these two superpowers are bringing their thoughts to South Africa. And we're already seeing the, we're already seeing symptoms of this with terror warnings, with, uh, you know, uh, millionaires bringing their toys to South Africa jets, people doing their shopping in South Africa. Mm. Now, South Africa is already facing a challenge of grey listing. South Africa is facing a challenge of um, uh, losing its AGOA uh, treaty. These are things that are going to affect us. We've already warned about the effect on our pockets of every citizen. We've already been trying to fight for the zero rated bets on all our foods because these are things that uh, our Reserve Bank is running out of the amount of uh, uh, rates that it, can, that it can increase before hyperinflation becomes something very, very serious. Now, we heard in Parliament yesterday that Cestria is one event away, one major event away from packing it all in. Um, we read in the newspaper that uh, Tonga Hewlett is having a bad uh, a bad run these affect families now KZN is an area that's already been plagued by droughts by uh, riots can you imagine a country that is not at all dare i say war torn but has got the elements of a new two nuclear powers fighting over it or fighting for its loyalty and by uh, what we're seeing here is that we need to find a way in which we tell both sides to cool it with us. We tell both sides that we're a country, we're a sovereign country, and that we're in control of what our domestic policy is. But that if we're truly neutral, we will abide by international law and we will abide by what is right by the people of South Africa, not by the government of South Africa, and not by our trade partners. So what would be the right thing to do is not for the President or the Minister of International Relations to be arrogant and to let the yacht dock in South Africa. The right thing to do would actually would be to tell Russia to keep themselves in check and to not use South Africa as a playground, or to put South Africa in harm's way, where we can be grey-listed, or where we can uh, where we can lose our trade agreements with other countries because of the fact that they're disregarding or disrespecting our sovereignty. And on the other side, the same thing. 
is that other countries need to know that they have to use the correct channels when they come to us or when they come through us or when they operate in our country, that there's a structure within us that they have to respect. So now we talk about Solomon's judgments. And I think when judging the two countries, we have to see how the two countries have behaved in South Africa. And if you remember the Solomon's judgment, there was the two mothers. The one was willing to let the baby be chopped in half. And the other mother was would rather let the baby be given to the other mother than let that baby be harmed. And I think we need to judge those two countries in who is willing to see this this land be chopped up and see hunger and famine and who is willing to do anything within its means to try and protect or impose to protect the economy. In that case, our foreign affairs policy needs to ensure that we're doing everything possible to endear ourselves towards that country. So as my colleague is talking about, there are ships that are not just being starved away from South Africa, they're being starved away from East Africa, West Africa, and North Africa. That has consequence to not just our people, it's our people in Africa. And we must use our proximity to BRICS and our proximity to the president in Russia to call for him to feed the people of Africa, to you to open up that blockade to allow those ships to come into the rest of Africa. And going back to the presentation, we must ensure that we're doing enough to ensure that we don't lose the trade tariffs, if we don't, uh, we're not getting grey listed, or that we preempt our grey listing, and that we do not antagonize by allowing things like yachts to arrive that come from Russia, or that we're doing enough to try and placate the war uh, in Ukraine to the pockets of the South Africans to ensure that we are know that people in South Africa will not starve. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Bergman. Honorable Swartz? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Chair, I will just show my face so that you see I'm the one speaking. Uh, I've got a bit of a network problem, and then I will ask my questions. Um, it is still me, Chair. I have not changed. I'm sure you okay, can bye. see that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Swartz. Thank you very much. Honorable President of Um, um, Honorable Chair, we welcome the presentations. Mine, Chair, would be as follows. Um, we have taken note of the fact that South Africa has structured bilateral mechanisms at different levels. Strategic dialogue, Wakagi, and annual bilateral forum with the US. Um, please describe the terms of reference for each of the mechanisms for us to understand the expected deliverables. If we were to assess the latest high level engagements with the US, what would be the summary achievements of each of them? It is a well-known fact that there are serious contradictions of approaches by the Republic of South Africa and the United States of America pertaining to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. How does DERCO provide policy advice to our government in the management of such contradictions? Overall, one can deduce that the trade relations of the Republic of South Africa and U.S of such a nature that one can assume that they are mutually beneficial to both countries. Usually using Ubuntu as a pathway to our diplomatic practice, how does DORCO assist in protecting South Africa's national interests through a balanced approach to the trade relations without compromising our African agenda? I thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thanks, Honorable Swartz. President? No, th thanks, uh, Chair. <clears throat> uh, 
I've seen uh, Honorable Swart's uh, face, but it's look uh, she has bought a, a new hat. Uh, <clears throat> but it's still here. Uh, Chair, I just want to start by uh, dealing with the question that uh, uh, Honorable Fiverr asked. So sometimes I, I just get uh, puzzled <clears throat> when we are in this committee and then we start asking questions to each other. Uh, that why South Africa is quiet. Uh, then the question says, who is South Africa? Honorable Fiber is South Africa, I'm South Africa. So, so I think some of the questions may be better answered by the one who's asking it. Uh, so, I don't believe that South Africa is, is, is quiet. South Africa is, 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 is speaking through its uh, policy uh, <clears throat> direction, which is informed by uh, the legislation and also the policy uh, decisions of the government. So, so <clears throat> this uh, so-called quietness, I, I don't understand it. Uh, so, <clears throat> Chair, one thing I understand, I, I, I accept the presentation is good, but what I understand with America is that it doesn't matter which president is elected there, <clears throat> whether it's a, a black president, the form of Obama, it's a white president, yellow president or brown president, the system that dictates uh, <clears throat> their own policy direction, uh, particularly when it comes to relations with other uh, neighboring countries or countries of the world, <clears throat> and also when it deals with the issue of trade relations. So I, I am not as much excited, Chairperson, uh, with that uh, there is engagement uh, between uh, our government at a high level between U.S. I will start to be happy, Chair, when I see this kind of uh, engagement. It's, it's nice to sit in the table <clears throat> with those who are privileged and uh, you're part of the elites. But the issue is that what do you benefit on behalf of your people or on behalf of your country out of those sitting around the dinner table and discuss issues and hug each other and smile and all those things? Chair, we are faced with serious, serious problems domestically here in South Africa. The issue of uh, tribal challenges is still with us and is, is deepening. Our people are starting to lose hope, uh, even in the government. It seems as if nothing is, is going all right uh, in, 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 in our country. Of course, yes, there are external factors, uh, such as the, the war, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, the so-called uh, U.S.-China trade war, uh, U.S. trade war. <clears throat> but, Chair, we have always talked here in this committee about the economic diplomacy. I, 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 I appreciate the engagement, but I think until such time, these uh, trade relations and agreements are agreed upon and signed don't filter to the message of our people. 
people in the villages, they start feeling the benefits of our engagement at a high level, government to government. <clears throat> people in the townships, if you go to our townships, they are starting to become like ghost towns now. Rural people, they are suffering. There is no service delivery uh, in terms of roads, say simple basic things, water, electricity, you know, shelters, houses. So my appeal is that uh, this uh, engagements and the uh, relations that are being formed, really, I want to appeal to you, Deputy Minister, because we are here representing the executives and the department. Can you start uh, <clears throat> really uh, prioritize uh, these issues that we are saying that at the end of the day, make sure that uh, whoever is representing us there, the president or the minister, but you as the department, you are going to make sure that these things, because it's, it's easy, as a committee, we can talk these big languages and uh, we understand because we happen to be privileged maybe to be exposed to understanding international politics. But our people on the ground, they don't understand this thing and they don't feel these things coming down to them <clears throat> and then benefiting and dealing with the challenges that are faced on a daily basis. So my appeal is that, yes, let uh, <clears throat> uh, our principles, political principles and the government engage uh, with uh, whichever country or is US, but really, really, I think uh, in this uh, portfolio committee, we must then really push very hard uh, to get to see what are the things that uh, we can go to our people and say, because US and SA, they are engaging, these are the things that <clears throat> the country has benefited, and this is how you, you also go uh, to, to benefit. Otherwise, we'll have these uh, presentations, and we'll be happy, uh, but when we come out there, then we are faced with the harsh realities uh, of life because we are also located in the communities ourselves. So we see what is happening. And people ask us and say, you as international relations uh, members, uh, <clears throat> what is the contribution of international relations uh, committee uh, or department? to these uh, challenges that we are faced with. So, and sometimes you find it difficult uh, to come uh, to tell them that this is what. Of course, others cannot be, the benefits cannot be quantified, uh, but they can come in a qualitative manner, but in one way or the other, this portfolio committee and the departments of international relations should be seen also to be adding to the contribution of uh, reducing uh, the triple challenges and the problems that uh, our people are faced with. Of course, Chess, in, in closing, <clears throat> South Africa, yes, is going to be, uh, if it's not now, a highly contested terrain uh, internationally. We are going to be the grass on which uh, different elephants are going to be fighting on. And I think uh, Honorable <clears throat> Bergman is correct. We need to devise a mechanisms of how are we going to uh, balance these things. Because I think even the relationship, uh, trade relations with uh, America, as uh, Honorable Swart was saying, <clears throat> it's not a balanced one. I think we can. We must move now to a level where 
Uh, it's Goliath and Goliath who are sitting in the table and they are negotiating. As it stands now, I think it's a David Goliath uh, a scenario that we are faced with. And I think as a country, we also need to up our game and also not allow anyone to come in our country and do as they please because our sovereignty then is undermined. And then at the end of the day, <clears throat> the country and the most vulnerable uh, sections of our society are the one that is uh, affected mostly. Thank you very much, Chair Thank you very much, President. Honorable members, there's a request that those who are in a position to be live on their videos, there's a request that they must do so because the proceedings of this meeting are also being covered on television. So members who are in a position to appear on the uh, videos when they speak, even when you are not speaking, just as part of the picture, you are requested to put on your videos. Those who are not in a position to do so because of whatever reason, it's understandable, including myself. I will not be able to be on video. Uh, press the abuse. Just before Honorable Kenneth Mashir Kodamini, the Deputy Minister responds and the team. This bomb threat which was made or brought to the attention of South Africa by the US and Britain. On the same day, I decided to go to Johannesburg in Santa. One of the places there which I went to, I asked the owner, how has this affected your business? Because it was empty. And the owner says, it's not only themselves, Almost everybody in Santin, business-wise, on that day, they lost a lot of revenue. It means tourism for that day was also affected. It means the people of South Africa who are in the transport industry were also affected because there were no commuters between whatever areas and something because of the fear and the anxiety. Now, I'm requesting, Deputy Minister, that uh, something much more tangible than the statement made by our President of the Republic, regarding this I, I, I know the president said it was rather an unfortunate development. It's diplomatic language. Yes, it's understandable. But I think uh, a much firmer position on what the U.S. has done so for instance, there has to be a meeting, a meeting after which the people of South Africa will be very clear on what is South Africa's stance in as far as this particular matter uh, is concerned. That is the, the first matter. The second issue, it's on a complaint which is unrelated to this meeting, but it's an important international relations matter of the matter that relates to the grain, which according to Honorable Faber, there will be some disaster if it does not reach its final destination. All of us are concerned about food security globally, particularly South Africa and the African continent in general. Even if there was no war between Russia and Ukraine, honorable members, it is an obligation on the part of the African continent using the Africa Free Trade Agreement and including all other instruments 
to make sure that we we develop our own food for food security in Africa. So even if the situation was not prevailing there, I don't understand why a continent as rich as the African continent, we cannot produce rice, we cannot produce wheat. So I hope that uh, PAP is meeting now. I hope that uh, the oversight mechanisms which uh, come through PAP and also through the department and so on, and then total independence of Africa economically so that we can produce our own food. Militarily, we have to be strong so that we can stand against, up against the bullies, global bullies like the U.S. So what I will, I will, I will uh, ask the Honorable Deputy Minister to do is rather to say what has been the clarity from Russia in as far as the transportation of that grain uh, is concerned to its intended destinations. The other matter relates to us as Africa, no longer just South Africa, our trade with the US in particular. If we are not going to accelerate our unity, if we are not going to accelerate our development of Africa as a global economic force, countries like the US will continue to undermine not only the individual countries in Africa, but the entire African continent. Because they don't see us as a force. That is why we can still have military bases in Africa, including, for instance, in countries such as Botswana. So we'll have to, as quickly as possible, as the African continent, bequeath to future generations a much better, sterner, firmer Africa in as far as global affairs are concerned. Now, the U.S. is a bully, honestly speaking. And it doesn't matter who is in power. For instance, Muammar Gaddafi was killed by the U.S. when President Obama was in position there in the U.S. as a president. So inherently within the, the U.S., Yes, U.S. is an important uh, role player in the economy globally. Bully. I mean, they can say to us, as South Africa and the continent, that because Russia is their enemy, U.S. enemies cannot be our enemies. U.S. friends cannot be our friends. There will be instances where, on a case by between what the U.S. does, what we do as South Africa, and what we do as the African continent, based, of course, on all these other agreements that we have economically with the United States of America. Now, you, they can go around and undermine the sovereignty of other countries, including the African continent, and say, you shall be punished. And we must applaud the South Africa's response in as far as uh, this threat from the U.S. Uh, is concerned. We will see whether President Biden will indeed live up to his promise to say, no matter the final a decision that will be taken you does not get affected. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. You can now respond to your team.
Thank you very much, Chairperson. I will allow my officials to start uh, responding on certain uh, issues. I'll come later. Thank you. Thank you, DM, and, and thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, I will start uh, by uh, from the last uh, comments made uh, by the Chairperson. Um, there is a discussion which is taking place uh, between uh, our president and the president of the EU, including the US, in terms of um, helping Africa to produce particularly fertilizers. Because one of the um, products which have been affected by this war is fertilizer from Ukraine in particular. And in, in, in our continent, there is definitely a uh, one, uh, a recognition that much, much needs, needs to be done and faster, um, but also to see this as, as an opportunity, uh, despite all the challenges in terms of uh, ability to, to produce our own. Terrorism scam, the, the security uh, colleagues from the different departments always work closely with, uh, with the U.S. Embassy here in particular. Um, and, it, and and now and then the embassy would, would come up with uh, such information that there, there could be something uh, coming up and our security uh, forces will then take care of it um, and engage them and look closely and then uh, deal with all those. The difference now is that they immediately, although they did say that you are going to, to say this talking to us at official level, uh, that we are going to announce within the next two hours. Uh, there was not a deeper, and, and this is what the president raised, a deeper conversation to look closely at what uh, the American counterparts were, were saying before they went out with that uh, statement. And they have recognized that, and they said we need, because the ambassador is new, need to sit down and engage on how to deal with these very sensitive issues and not alone the, the way they impact on our economy. Um, the, in, in, in terms of grain, perhaps it also answers, uh, this will relate to what has been asked before. Uh, the South Africa has said this from the beginning, that the UN should play a central role in, in bringing about the end to this conflict, because the UNSG in particular, because if then a country becomes involved directly, it becomes like it's either you're supporting that country and that country. So in terms of the UNSG and taking coming in to come, to make sure that there's an outcome which ended up with uh, grain being allowed to get out of Ukraine, it really came out of uh, many, many push by South Africa in different contexts with different uh, stakeholders. President uh, Ramaphosa constantly talked to President Putin and President uh, of Ukraine, um, Zelensky. And every time there's something new, which seems to like the, the annexation of those uh, four uh, regions, immediately our president spoke to President Putin and also spoke to President uh, Zelensky and engages all the parties involved. Um, and actually, in many cases, they would be the ones who are asking for what South Africa thinks in this instance. Uh, because in a case where it's armed war uh, from all sides, then the, the, the end result is unimaginable on what's going to happen for it to end. And that's why South Africa pushes in, in, in different ways. And every time we do that, unfortunately, it helps not to, to be public about it in order to get uh, more, uh, the parties listening to you more as you go forward. Um, uh, Honorable Mbanza, we agree with you that uh, the economic uh, development policy or economic policy, uh, trade and investment in, in U.S. is usually very bipartisan and it always continues the way it continues. However, I can say that in terms of our relations with the, with the, with the U.S., um, we 
we, we can point out that the relations do not only happen between government to government or uh, a business sector, but universities, people to people, women in government, young people. Um, if uh, the chairperson uh, would like to have that, we can uh, write out a list of the different projects. And we have very, um, very smart young South Africans who've been through one of the programs which runs through and, and uh, doing wonderful things in, in South Africa. For instance, in 2021, South Africa exported goods which were worth 192.4 billion, while it imports goods which are equal to 96.8 billion. Um, the foreign direct investment led by manufacturing, finance, insurance, and wholesale trade and stock was 116 billion in 2019, which was a 6.8% increase from 2018. According to South African tourism statistics, uh, for the period January to April 2022, tourist arrivals went up by 162.1% as we received about 914,000 tourists compared to the same period in 2021. Compared to other regions, the North America, the USA has recorded the highest increase in volume as pointed out in the, in the numbers uh, for, for, for tourism. And in terms of the private sector investment, the private sector has pledged their support for the economic recovery efforts in South Africa. Uh, companies like Amazon Web Services, Ford Motor Company, Procter & Gamble, amongst others, continue to display confidence in our country. For example, PNG will be commissioning their new area liquid detergents plant in Nigel in Gauteng by 16th of this month. The, the new plant will not only increase the PNG economic footprint in South Africa, but also add over 400 direct and indirect jobs. So there, there are specific figures uh, when it comes to our relations in trade and, and investment. We do agree that most of the time when we get to our communities, uh, it's, it's not very uh, clear um, and, and easy to defend because of the, the, suggest uh, the, the challenges we are facing. Uh, honorable source, in the terms of reference, let me just uh, clarify, perhaps let me say in terms of contradictions, and I think uh, the honorable members have spoken, have highlighted that, uh, and the chairperson in particular, that we will always have our own national interests and values, and they're not always going to match uh, with those of the USA or any other country. And that's when, where you could see uh, what could be uh, seen as contradictions because the other country you are dealing with also has its own national interests. And if they feel that their interests are not being um, addressed by your response to theirs, then they will do differently. And, and that's the balancing which we, we, we highlighted in our presentation with, uh, in relation to China and, and any other country, that the most important thing in terms of our mandate is that uh, we have to ensure that the national interests and uh, the priorities uh, which have been set out by our government uh, and the honorable members here are being taken care of in all the negotiations which we have with different countries um, and in all what we put forward, whether it's in multilateral fora or in bilateral uh, meetings. Uh, I would say in terms of let me talk about the terms of reference for the different uh, structures. Firstly, we've got diplomats from both countries. Our diplomats, uh, our diplomats in the US will then be looking at opportunities for South Africa for all different uh, sectors in terms of our priorities and, and uh, the, the priority sectors. And here, the Americans through their embassy will do the same and will be talking to the uh, different departments who are dealing with those issues which they see as offering an opportunity. It is then that group which will belong to what uh, the senior officials group, which mean, meets every year. And in that group, then there will be negotiations with each sector 
uh, let's say agriculture in South Africa and agriculture in US would meet and say, these are the areas, these are our needs from each country. Can we uh, work together? And then, of course, the officials would be working, being directed by, the, by their minister. And then perhaps there would be an agreement on how we're going to work together going forward. And in some instances, then uh, US would say, we'll support you in this way. And, and there would be negotiations. So the, 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 all the departments then will have an agreement on how they are going to work with their counterparts in the UN and the, in the US. And then there will be a meeting every year to look at all the agreements and the projects to see how they are being implemented, to check whether there are any challenges, to check whether they, um, there are positive outcomes which can be used as models for other uh, uh, projects, even if they are not relating to the, to the US. The report which comes from the annual meeting of the senior officials goes to what we call a strategic dialogue. And that's where the ministers meet. And that's where then the senior officials will take this report to the ministers saying, this is what we have achieved. This works, but there are challenges. And these are the different challenges which we're having. This is mostly on the economic side. On the political side, it's the same thing. Issues coming up and how we are engaging uh, at all levels. Then the reports will be taken to the ministers uh, to engage. And then the ministers are supposed to be the ones who are then will explore how to solve problems where there are problems uh, in terms of implementation of projects, where there are political issues, how we work together with them multilaterally within the continent and everywhere else, they will also speak about that. And so from that, the ministers then will write a report to um, or take a report to the summit, which is the president's, and that's the high level one between our presidents. But in between, because we've got so many projects between ourselves and the US, it's usually not easy when we meet as senior officials to talk about everything. So it was decided that there must be another engagement at director, a director general level where mostly it will be issues, political issues related to Africa and global issues, and they are all political. And then again, whatever comes out of that will then feed in into what uh, the ministers will be presenting to the high level, the presidential levels. And again, then at the president's level is, is high level in terms of strategic um, engagement and how we move forward as, as countries and also to confirm. But, the, the presidents and the ministers meet uh, in during all the other meetings of the world uh, to discuss the different things, to find each other, particularly during this very difficult time. And and I must say that US have, have quite been have been engaging South Africa a lot in terms of uh, what our thoughts are in terms of the conflict going on, but also what is the engagement in BRICS, which uh, 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 our country is part of, and also, as I said, uh, our president engages with BRICS and also engages uh, with all others, including um, President Zelensky of Ukraine. Uh, in terms of gray listing, there's a specific group which is working uh, very hard on this area with all the related uh, international organizations. Uh, to look at uh, what can be done to ensure that uh, we don't uh, receive any grade listing. So I think, uh, hi, if, if you allow me, uh, DM and, and Chairperson, I think I've clarified all the issues. Uh, South Africa has not really been silent uh, or neutral. Uh, we've put forward our pro uh, position, but South Africa is very much engaged with all the, the, the leaders in terms of pushing and saying, uh, especially in terms of the UN reform, and also the fact that a solution has to be found to end the war, and pointing out that there is nobody, especially a small South Africa, who's going to stop the war, but the big powers have got uh, the power to actually stop it. So there's a lot of engagement taking place and a lot of respect has arisen in terms of understanding uh, where we come from and the impact of what's going on, irrespective of how, how far it is. I'm not sure if Madame DM have covered all the issues which have been raised. Thank you. 
Thank you, my sister. Thank you very much for those responses. Mutazatona, dear comrade Kenneth Mashero Damini. Thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, and thank the officials and members of parliament that have asked questions. Well, I just want to add on the issues and the concern that has been raised by the by Honourable Member Mpanza. Uh, I think, uh, Honourable Member, you're quite correct that um, some of the things that we are doing with different countries, um, uh, our communities on the ground, they don't, they don't feel it and they don't know them. So what, what, what we have planned to do in the department is that um, we are looking at all memorandum of understanding and all trade agreements that we have, that we have signed. Some were signed uh, seven years ago, some were signed recently, and the new ones that needed to be signed. We, what we are advising a sector department to make sure that when they sign an agreement, they must also put an implementation plan so that we, we can assess whether we are really, uh, South Africa is gaining out of such agreements. So these are the things that we, we, we are trying to implement. And these are the things that we are trying to monitor from the sector department as the department, as we're quite aware that we have been given that mandate by the new legislation that the president has signed uh, in 2020. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister Kenneth Mashiro Dlamini. We extend thanks to your team of the department for the manner in which the briefing was done. It's quite clear that uh, very qualitative time and preparations were done to do the presentation. As part of accountability by the executive to the legislative arm of the state, we also want to thank this opportunity to thank members for the critical manner in which they raise the issues. It is our responsibility committee, so we must always embrace the points of necessary divergence as members of the parliament so that dynamism in the portfolio committee must not die. But at the end of the day, we are clarified, we understand, we may agree to disagree. So We thank South Africans who have been following the proceedings of this portfolio committee today on all the channels provided by Parliament to, as part of strengthening democracy. The media that has participated, our staff, all of them of the portfolio committee, we thank you for the preparations. And this is how we come to the end of the meeting. We'll meet in Parliament at three. Thanks, honorable members. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.